excited to introduce a first time Fister, Tyler Woods. Uh, first time telling a story at Fist. Um, she is an author and a musician who plays in several bands, including Zen Salad, Holy Who's Who, Wired, and she runs a nonprofit teaching people how to play ukulele and then having them play it forward for local charities. So please give a warm welcome to Tyler. and I don't memorize nothing, <laughs> except for where the bathroom is. <clears throat> I once did the greatest escaped act ever. Harry Houdini had nothing on me. He was a great escape artist, but I was better than that. While he struggled to get out of chains and locks so he didn't drown, I was performing the greatest act of all. Mm -hmm. I escaped the world of living as a deaf person and at the age of seven got my hearing back and had to be thrown into a world of hearing. And that's an interesting story to me. Apparently the best I can get from my parents, I was anywhere from two to four months old, and a virus hit me and it took my hearing. And apparently I was so good at faking hearing that no one could figure it out till I was midway through first grade. And the school caught me doing something wrong. And it wasn't all that bad, I didn't know I was deaf. I just faked it through life like everyone else did, for instance, like any child, I loved TV. I had the opportunity to create my own script because I couldn't hear the TV. So I got to create my own plot. I thought that's what you did. No one told me different. So I remember watching Flipper. Now in my version of Flipper, Flipper talked. <laughs> And it was pretty cool, I thought. So imagine my surprise when I discovered all Flipper did was squeak. <laughs> I remember I wanted to write to producers. And I didn't know what I would say, but something was wrong with the dolphin that squeaked and didn't talk. <laughs> Bewitched. <laughs> you know, that was a great show about a beautiful woman. Possibly my first crush. Hard to say. But she twitched her nose and did magic. And I didn't know this, but it wasn't until I got my hearing back that when she twitched her nose, there was a sound effect. I didn't know that. So all I knew about TV was that I wrote the scripts and I thought it was far better than the real scripts, because imagine my surprise when I got my hearing back, and discovered Darren was a whiner, <laughs> who was an alcoholic, basically. <laughs> Samantha was codependent. <laughs> and I didn't find any of it funny. <laughs> but the first thing I remember hearing on TV when I was deaf was the Oscar Mayer wiener whistle. <laughs> now, I heard it 
when I got my hearing back, but I never could hear it. But I could see it. I could see this little hot dog. And I figured, okay, so it's got to be this pitch that kind of went, whee! I wasn't sure. <laughs> but when I got my hearing back, it was the first commercial I saw, and I remember this, is when I got my hearing back, it was the very first commercial I heard. And only one thing mattered. I had to get an Oscar Mayer Beanie whistle. <laughs> yeah. I screamed and yelled and I didn't get an, one single Oscar Mayer Wiener whistle. I got three. <laughs> but I think really, I'm going to get real here, is what makes my story so interesting to me is my parents did not notice that I was a deaf child. Now this should have been a really big clue that I was from a highly dysfunctional family. <laughs> I didn't even know what dysfunctional meant back then. But they were clueless. They did not pay attention. And I mean, I, I had so many blatant clues. I talked funny. I never responded when they called my name. They just said I was a defiant child with a speech impediment. Okay. But it was obvious I was reading lips because I would move my lips when I read lips. I sometimes wonder, was I the one that got caught being deaf? Or were my parents the one that got caught doing nothing about a deaf child? Maybe I was just too good at faking it. I mean, I faked that I knew what I was going to do all the time in my life. Problem was, I was so used to faking it that it didn't make a difference because I started living in two worlds. I lived in a world where I didn't hear, and then I lived in the world where I pretended I could hear. I realized then that silence had its own language. As promised by the school that discovered I was deaf, I started speech therapy to learn to talk appropriately. It's rabbit, not wabbit, the speech therapist would say to me. Can't you learn your R's? Obviously not. That's why I spent half my school days in therapy instead of being with the other kids. I was fairly convinced that the speech therapist was a bitch. <laughs> she couldn't help it. She was probably born a bitch. In fact, as a kid, I was pretty sure she'd need a bitchectomy. And I sometimes would feel so sorry for this horrible handicap that she had. Her poor family. One day, she said angrily to me, I need you to pronounce the F sound, and I mean it, frog, F. Frown, F. She wasn't patient with me. Come on, she would demand. And I felt it coming out of my mouth. <laughs> I was familiar with the word. The F word. I saw my mother mouth that word so many times. Now, I wasn't sure it was a dirty word. But, when my mom mouthed it, everybody stopped. So I had a suspicion it was probably a dirty word. Oh, here comes this therapist who's a total bitch. The F word. Okay. I said it. Fuck. That was the day I fell in love with the word. My mother felt safe because no one could say, where did you hear that from? <laughs> but when my eyes saw her say the word fuck, I knew it was a powerful word. And that word meant freedom for me. Because I got a great reaction from it. I'm also writing a book right now. I'm a therapist. And I'm calling it Swearapy. <laughs> Because to this day, I believe awesome, awesome, awesomeness comes through swearing. <laughs> so my parents were.
are set on not having me at living at home. They wanted me institutionalized at the deaf and blind school. They certainly did not have time or patience or the intelligence to raise a child like me. And they took me for grant a tour of the school, and I was young, and I will never forget the gray tiles on the floor and the dreary smell. And I recall the woman who gave us the tour. She had jet black hair. I thought if I put my fingers on her hair, I'd get dye on my fingers. It was that black. That's the one thing. I'm six and a half years old, and I remembered her black hair. I laughed a lot because that's how I faked it. Whenever I laughed, I was frightened. But it was my coping mechanism. Talk about faking it on the inside. I giggled and laughed my ass off all the time because deep inside I was scared. And the intake lady with the dripping black hair said, I won't be teased anymore or picked on and that I would learn how to exist in a deaf world. Now, I'm six and a half years old, and I wanted more than just an existence. Besides, I liked where I lived. We lived on a 40-acre ranch, and that ranch was my entire world, and I protested loud enough until somebody heard me, and my parents were educated on a possible procedure that may restore part of my hearing. They used a thing called ray treatments to create scar tissue to make eardrums, which was terrifying to me because the machine was huge in the eyes of a child as young as me, and the steel table was cold. And with that said, it was that huge machine and that cold table that gave me the ability to hear. So as a child, I learned something very powerful. What you fear could heal you. One thing that was discovered when I got my hearing back was I was a music prodigy. For whatever reason, when I picked up a guitar, I could play anything by ear. I could hear it on the radio, and I could play it. And I could care less whether I could talk like other people or not. My instrument was my voice. And to me, I didn't have a speech impediment when I sang. So in order to fit in, I sang. I sang my way through school. Now, I had figured out how to fake being a recovering deaf kid who wore braces on her legs and was often described as retarded. And I was told I was dumb and would amount to nothing. And I sure would like to find those people today and fling my fucking PhD in their face. <laughs> so I sang with style and flair through childhood. And it worked out great until one day I was sent home with a note saying I had to use my talking voice. Use my talking voice. Nothing in my life felt normal. I lived in a deaf world for almost seven years and I was tossed out on my ear from a world of silence into a world of noise and chaos and confusing. And I could not use my singing voice. Remember that F word I said a lot? I said it so much that they sent me through counseling. See, silence is not golden as far as doctors and speech therapists in my family was concerned. So off to counseling, I went and I hated it. I hated their fake smiles, and this is what I really hate. How are we doing today? <laughs> we. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we are fine. <laughs> whoever we are. <laughs> I remember thinking, you know what? I'm going to become a counselor one day. And I did. I can't believe that 50 some odd years ago I said, I'm going to grow up and be a counselor. And that's what I do for a living. I'm a psychotherapist. And I spent most of my childhood in therapy and I hated it. I always said I wanted to either be like a beetle, a writer or a counselor. In a way, I became all three. I played professional music for decades and still play in bands. I got sober and went to college and became a psychotherapist, got my PhD, and I'm on my third book. I became everything I said I would be. So it's funny I tell people as a therapist to fake it until you make it, because that's how I got sober, and I've been sober almost 29 years. It's how I got through college was severe dyslexia. It was how I managed to be okay with being a gay woman, being raised by a Mormon family. And it's how I got through childhood of being deaf and entering a world of hearing with no instruction manual. 
And what did I learn from this entire experience? There are no instruction manuals to life. And you get to figure it out all by yourself, and that's the process. You get to have the ability and the opportunity to do and achieve anything you want, as long as you know the magic of faking it till you make it. <laughs>